If I don't buy a house now, will I ever be able to afford one? It's a question so many of us are struggling with, especially people who live in big cities and have seen home prices skyrocket all around them. Even if buying now creates more of a financial strain in the short term, is it still better than waiting for prices to potentially rise more? Today, I'll explain how to make the right decision for your family's financial future. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bigger Pockets YouTube channel where we help you achieve financial freedom through real estate investing. I'm Dave Meyer, the head of real estate investing at Bigger Pockets. And today we're answering a question posted in the Bigger Pockets forums by a user named Melvin in Southern California. And I'm going to use Melvin's question as sort of a jumping off point to explain how anyone living in a expensive market can still invest in real estate without having to make a huge compromise on their primary home. To get us started, I'm just going to read what Melvin wrote on the Bigger Pockets forums. He wrote, quote, I live in Alhambra, Southern California, and I'm renting for $2,850 per month with $110,000 saved up. I don't expect my rent to rise, and my wife and I have about $3,250 left over after expenses every single month. My question is, should I keep renting and look for an investment property or buy a property for my wife and family and I to live in? If I buy a primary home, my mortgage would be about $5,600 per month and I'd be close to house poor with most of my money tied up in that property. But homes in this area have appreciated well over the last few years because of good school districts. So I fear I'll miss out on the opportunity to ever own here if I don't buy a condo or a town home now. My wife doesn't feel comfortable house hacking with our daughter in the house. And lastly, he says, I've been looking at investment properties outside of California where I could buy a property for around 100 grand in cash and then refi with the bank to keep 20% down and the remaining money as my safety net. So Melvin has a lot of different questions here, and I think many of them are common for people who are currently renting inexpensive markets like Los Angeles, but want to invest in real estate. Question number one Melvin posed was, should he give up his $2,850 lease to buy a comparable property with a $5,600 mortgage before LA real estate prices appreciate further? All right, let's break this one down. And I think the question here really centers on what is going to have the ultimate higher living costs? And I know it seems obvious because Melvin's mortgage would be $5,600 and his rent would be $2,800. And you're saying, hey, renting is a way better deal than buying that house. It is not actually that easy. We need to factor in the full cost of home ownership and the full benefits of home ownership. We need to talk about things like amortization, which is paying down your mortgage each and every month. We need to talk about things like the tax deductions you get on mortgage interest. We also need to talk about the costs like repairs and maintenance that come with home ownership, taxes and insurance. So let's break down the numbers. If Melvin were to buy this home, let's assume it's about the median price in this area, which is nearly $900,000. And I did the math and Melvin was correct. His mortgage payment, including principal, interest, taxes, and insurance would come out to about 5,600 bucks a month. It sounds like a lot. It it definitely is. But if you're unaware, the interest that you pay on your mortgage is actually tax deductible. So I actually went through and figured out of the roughly $6,800 per year he'd be paying towards his mortgage in the first year, 50,000 of that would be going towards his interest. This is just how mortgages work. They're front loaded towards interest. And so he'd be paying 50 grand a year in interest and assuming his tax rate is about 30%, he would be getting a lot of that back. He would be getting about $15,000 per year back just in mortgage deductions alone. So that's something that we have to take off the top. Then the principal that he's paying every year, or at least in year one, would be about $8,000. This is basically paying down the amount he owes the bank. And so when you add these two things together, the the tax deductions and the principal pay down, that's about $23,000 in benefit that Melvin's getting right off the top. If we subtract that from the $68,000 a year he was going to be paying in his mortgage, that comes out to roughly $45,000 in housing costs. Then we do need to add back some of the repairs and maintenance that come with owning a home. So let's call it $50,000 a year if you were to buy the home. Now, remember, his 
rent was just $2,850 per month. And if you annualize that, it comes out to about $17,000 cheaper for him to rent than to buy. But we haven't factored in one last thing, which is appreciation. Now, appreciation on average, home prices go up about three and a half percent per year, but no one knows if that's going to happen. And I did the calculation and basically Melvin's home would have to appreciate just 2% per year to cover that $17,000 in difference. That's a very reasonable bet. I mean, it's lower than the long-term average. So if you're going to hold on to this property for 10 years or so, I think it's pretty safe to assume that you are going to come out ahead in terms of living expenses, but it's probably not going to be some huge win. And if you are a risk averse person and you rather have more dollars in your bank account, more dollars coming in every month, then renting is going to be better. This is a purely financial long-term calculation that I'm doing that says holding on to that home is probably going to be better, but you have to hold on to it for at least three years, probably five years or longer to really realize that benefit. So that was Melvin's first question. Is it better to buy or to rent? And it really comes down to how long you're going to live in that home. And it's still pretty close either way. So let's move on to the second question that Melvin asked is, should he actually just keep renting and instead buy an investment property in a more affordable market? So I actually analyzed this and I used the bigger pockets calculator, which I'm going to show you right now for whether or not this is a good decision. I made a couple of assumptions here for Melvin because I don't know his exact situation, but my recommendation would be to actually take the $110,000 that he has saved and invest $100,000 of it into a property. Now, Melvin said, should I buy a $100,000 property cash? That would not be my recommendation. Generally speaking, a property that's going to cost $100,000 is not going to be a great property. That is too inexpensive. And I know you think, oh, it's cheap. That's going to be a good deal. But cheap properties have a way of becoming very expensive because they're probably not in good shape. They're probably not in areas that are going to command a lot of rent or where rent's going to grow. And they're probably not going to appreciate. So I would personally recommend to Melvin spending your $100,000 in a different way. My recommendation is to take that 100 grand and to put more than the 20% down that you have to put down. I'd say 30 or 40% down. So reducing your leverage in a market that is growing and is likely to appreciate. So I picked a market here, Indianapolis, Indiana. It's a great growing market where you can easily buy a single family home for $250,000. If you put 35% down, which is how I analyze this deal, you could generate more than 5% cash flow, which is pretty good good. It's not like the best cash flow in the world that you would do if you renovated a property, but for an on-market deal, putting 35% down while still leaving yourself 12 grand for down payment costs and cash reserves and leaving yourself $10,000 in cash just in case you have an emergency come up in your life, this could be a really good deal for you. So if you did this deal, here's how it would work out for Melvin. He would be renting, which means that he would still be saving 3,200 bucks a month just based on not buying that home. Next, even after all of his expenses, and believe me, I analyzed this deal correctly. I took into account vacancy, management fees, capital expenditures, repair and maintenance. I factored in it all and he'd still be making after all of that and setting aside money when the roof breaks, the water heater breaks, I'm setting aside money for all of that. He'd still be making $400 per month. So all told in Melvin's life, his lifestyle would be pretty solid, right? He'd be living in this property that sounds like seems like a good enough place to live. And he'd be saving and earning $3,600 per month. When you think about that annually, he'd be saving Forty to $45,000 per year. So if he did this for just two years, he could then go buy another property just like the one in Indianapolis and add that to his portfolio. Two years later, he can keep doing that. If you did this for 10 or 15 years, you would have a portfolio of multiple rental properties that are throwing off cash. The cash flow is going to be going up because rents increase over time as your debt stays fixed. And these properties are likely to appreciate. So if it were me, I would lean towards this particular decision. Now that so far, I've only been talking about the cash flow element here. But if I scroll down here, 
here on the Bigger Pockets rental property calculator, I could see that I would also be benefiting from appreciation in the property. And I only put in 2% appreciation here when I underwrote this deal, which is lower than the average. It's very conservative. But on top of the benefits I just said, let's say he held it for 10 years. He'd earn $121,000 in equity growth over those 10 years, which comes out to about $12,000 per year, which is another $1,000 a month he's benefiting. So when you put all of these things together, I see this as the better financial decision, right? It's less risk, in my opinion, because you're not going to be putting all of your money into a primary residence and have very little personal cash flow every single month. Instead, you're staying in a rental, you're saving $3,600 a month, which you can save up to put into future deals. If something goes wrong, in your life, you have plenty of cash flow cushion. You are earning way more than you are spending. That's just good personal finance. Plus, there's really good upside on this kind of deal. Indianapolis is a good growing market. Rents are probably going to go up. This property is actually probably going to appreciate more than the 2% per year that I underwrote it at. And plus, this is the start of a portfolio that you can scale relatively easy with these numbers. Like I said, you could buy this kind of rental every two years or so without really changing your lifestyle at all. So to me, this really sets Melvin up for long-term financial growth and financial freedom. Of course, it really is a personal preference, right? It comes down to where you want to live. And if it is worth the $10,000, $20,000 per year benefit of the potential rental property to own your own home, then you should do that, right? Like some people might think that owning their own home is worth a $20,000 per year decline in your net worth. So everyone has to make that decision for themselves. Personally, I'd keep renting and I would invest long distance, but it's totally up to you. I just wanna show you the math that you should be thinking about if you are facing this question yourself. Last question here that Melvin asked or that I was thinking through is, does Melvin have any other options? Does he have another path to eventually owning a home for his family, even as LA prices appreciate? Well. The obvious answer here is house hacking, where you buy a duplex, live in one half and rent out the other. But he said proactively that his wife is not comfortable with that, given that they have a child. And that's totally understandable. I've done this and I think there are ways to make it work. You know, if you buy a side by side duplex, you are just sharing a wall with someone. It's really no different than sharing an apartment building or anything else. I think people sort of overestimate the hassle or the inconvenience that comes with house hacking. But I totally understand that it's not for everyone. And so Melvin and his family have a personal preference not to pursue that. I would say, though, generally speaking, we're just talking a lot about personal preference. If owning a home, Melvin, for you is a personal priority and you want to buy that property sometime in the next few years, you probably should do it now. I think property prices are going to go up. I don't know the LA market in super big detail, but I would say that over time, property prices go up. They go up three and a half percent per year. California has been one of the faster appreciating markets over the last several decades. And I know that it has cooled off over the last several years, but in the last six, eight months, we're seeing the California market start to heat up again. Some of the fastest appreciating markets are in Northern California or Central California. I don't think it will be long before Southern California catches up. So that is one last thing for you to consider, Melvin. You don't have to make the perfectly optimized financial decision for you. You just have to think about what your priorities are. Is it owning a home? Then you should just buy the home and it will be a pretty good financial decision for you. If perfectly optimizing your financial future is most important to you, then I would say keep renting indefinitely and start investing somewhere probably in the Midwest or the Northeast where you can get some cash flow, but they're still good appreciating markets. So that's my advice for Melvin and for all of you, because I know this is a really common question and challenge that people find themselves in while we're in this very expensive housing market like we're in today. Before we go, a reminder that I found Melvin's question on the Bigger Pockets forum. So if you have a real estate question of your own, you can go to biggerpockets.com slash forums and get advice from more than 3 million members totally for free. Thank you all so much for watching. For Bigger Pockets, I'm Dave Meyer. I'll see you soon.